What's up guys? In this video, we'll go through the process of getting a web server set up to host deep learning web applications and serve deep learning models with Express for Node.js. So let's get to it. To build deep learning applications that run in the browser, we need a way to host these applications and a way to host the models. So then, really, we just need a way to serve static files. If you followed the series on deploying Keras models, then you know that we already have a relatively easy way of hosting static files, and that's with Flask. Flask, though, is written in Python, and while it would work perfectly fine to host the TensorFlow.js applications we'll be developing, it makes sense that we might want to use a JavaScript-based technology to host our apps since we're kind of breaking away from Python and embracing JavaScript in this series. So, enter Express for Node.js. Express is a minimalist web framework very similar to Flask, but is for Node.js, not Python. And if you're not already familiar with Node.js, then you're probably wondering what it is as well. Node.js, which we'll refer to most of the time as just Node, is an open source runtime environment that executes JavaScript on the server side. See, historically, JavaScript has been used mainly for client-side applications, like browser applications, for example. But Node allows us to write server-side code using JavaScript. We'll specifically be making use of Express to host our web applications and serve our models. So let's see how we can do that now. First things first, we need to install Node.js. I'm here on the Downloads page of Node's website, so you just need to navigate to this page Choose the installation for your operating system and get it installed. I've installed Node on a Windows machine, but you'll still be able to follow the demos we'll see in a few moments, even if you're running another operating system. All right, after we've got Node installed, we need to create a directory that will hold all of our project files. So we have this directory here I've called TensorFlow.js. Within this directory, we'll create a subdirectory called local server, which is where the express code that will run our web server will reside. And we'll also create a static directory, which is where our web pages and eventually our models will reside. Within this local server, we create a package.json file, which is going to allow us to specify the packages that our project depends on. Let's go ahead and open this file. I've opened this with Visual Studio Code, which is a free open source code editor developed by Microsoft that can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. This is what we'll be using to write our code, so you can download it and use it yourself as well, or you can use any other editor that you'd like. All right, back to the package.json file. Within package.json, we're going to specify a name for our project, which we're calling TensorFlow.js, all lowercase per the requirements of this file. We'll also specify the version of our project. There's some specs that the format of this version has to meet, but most simplistically, it has to be in an x.x.x format, so we're just going to go with the default of 1.0.0. All right, name and version are the only two requirements for this file, but there are several other optional items we can add, like a description, the author, and a few others. We're not going to worry about this stuff, but we are going to add one more thing, the dependencies. This specifies the dependencies that our project needs to run. We're specifying Express here since that's what we'll be using to host our web apps, and we're also specifying the version. Now, we're going to open PowerShell, and we have the ability to open it from right within this editor by navigating to View, and then Integrated Terminal. And you should have the ability to open the terminal of your choice that's appropriate for your operating system if you're running on Linux, for example, and don't have PowerShell. Otherwise, you can just open a terminal outside of the editor if you'd like. All right, so from within PowerShell, we make sure we're inside of the local server directory where the package.json file is. And we're going to run npm install. npm stands for Node Package Manager, and by running npm install, npm will download and install the dependencies listed in our package.json file. So let's run npm install, and we'll see it installs Express. And when this is finished, you can see that we now have an added node modules directory that contains the downloaded packages, and we additionally have this package lock.json file that we didn't have before. It contains information about the downloaded dependencies. Don't delete these things. All right, so at this point, we have node, we have express, now we need to write a node program that will start the express server and will host the files that we specify. Oh, see, that makes sense. 
To do this, we'll create this file called server.js. Inside of server.js, we first import express using require express. Using require like this will import the express module and give our program access to it. You can think of a module in Node as being analogous to a library in JavaScript or Python, just a group of functions that we want to have access to from within our program. And then we create an express application using the express module, which we assign to app. An express app is essentially a series of calls to functions that we call middleware functions. Middleware functions have access to the HTTP request and response objects, as well as the next function in the application's request response cycle, which just passes control to the next handler. So within this app, when a request comes in, we're doing two things. We're first logging information about the request to the terminal where the express server is running. And we then pass control to the next handler, which will respond by serving any static files that we've placed in this directory called static that's right within the root directory of our TensorFlow.js project. So in our case, the middleware functions I mentioned are here and here. Note that the calls to app.use are only called once, and that's when the server is started. The app.use calls specify the middleware functions, and calls to those middleware functions will be executed each time a request comes into the server. Lastly, we call app.listen to specify what port Express should listen on. I've specified port 81 here, but you can specify whichever unused port you'd like. When the server starts up and starts listening on this port, this function will be called, which will log this message letting us know that the server is up and running. All right, we're all set up. Let's drop a sample HTML file into our static directory, then start up the Express server and see if we can browse to the page. We're going to actually just place the web application called predict.html that we created in the Keras deployment series into this directory as a proof of concept. So we place that here. You can use any HTML file you'd like though to test this. Now to start Express, we use PowerShell. Let's make sure we're inside of the local server directory and we run node server.js. We get our output message letting us know that Express is serving files from our static directory on port 81. So now let's browse to localhost, or whatever the IP address is that you're running Express on, port 81 slash predict.html, which is the name of the file we put into the static directory. And here we go. This is indeed the web page we wanted to be served. We can also check out the output from this request in PowerShell to view the logging that we specified. So good, we now have Node and Express set up to be able to serve our models and host our TensorFlow.js apps that we'll be developing coming up. Give me a signal in the comments if you were able to get everything up and running, and I'll see you in the next video.